Um, I will introduce our first speaker, Dr. Uh, Gary Cassell from Emory University. He is the uh, professor of uh, uh, cell biology and neurology. He just informed me that he just recently got promoted since our brochure was printed. It's that recent. So it's congratulations to Dr. Cassell. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Dr. Wang. It's really a pleasure to be here and to you know, partner with you in this exciting uh, conference. Uh, I also wanted to extend a welcome from my chairman, uh, Dr. Alan uh, Levy, uh, chairman of the Department of Neurology and director of the Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. I regrettably could not uh, you know, attend, but he really is uh, very much uh, excited about this uh, event and uh, the role that Emory could uh, partner with the Hope and Light Foundation and Dr. Wang from uh, Stanford uh, University. Um, what I'm going to do in this talk is to kind of orient you a little bit about some of the basic uh, neurobiology of spinal muscular atrophy and the protein that's affected the survival of motor neuron protein, and also talk about therapeutic uh, 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 strategies. I promise that there will be no uh, multiple choice uh, exam uh, you know, following this uh, a, 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 a talk, but I, I want to give you a flavor for some of the types of experiments and questions that researchers are uh, asking. And uh, uh, before I begin, I just want to uh, acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Wilford Russell, who is uh, here and uh, leads our program on spinal muscular uh, atrophy at, at Emory. Uh, our laboratory is interested in many aspects of the development, function, and dysfunction of the uh, nervous system, and our work on SMA is, represents a, a, a large, significant part of all of these activities. So for just an overview, uh, this is introduction for, for many of you, the spinal muscular atrophy is an inherited autosomal recessive motor neuron disease. What autosomal recessive means is that the child that's affected uh, has two uh, d d uh, d damaged uh, genes, often with uh, deletions or mutations. This is inherited from parents that are carriers that uh, do not have uh, any symptoms of uh, uh, the disease. The disease presents itself as a progressive neurodegeneration, and it's a single gene disorder uh, caused by mutations or deletions in this SMN1 gene. Which, stands, which encodes for a protein that's called the survival of motor neuron protein, or SMN for short. Uh, there's an incidence in one in 6,000 uh, live births. I won't go into the different clinical forms of SMA, because Dr. Wang will do that, but I just want to uh, orient you, and many of you already know this, that there are three types of spinal muscular atrophy that uh, present itself with different types of severity. The most severe form, type one, is the number one genetic killer of infants and children uh, under two. But of course, uh, many uh, children live uh, far longer than uh, that. This protein, uh, SMN, is present at very severely reduced levels uh, in type one. And in the other types, there are higher levels of the SMN. However, these proteins that are present are lacking a critical domain present at the carboxy terminus of the protein. So this is the SMN1 gene that's affected in SMA. And in type 1 SMA patients, you have no expression of SMN protein from the SMN1 gene, because this is an autosomal receptive disease. And here you have the two alleles with large uh, deletions or uh, mutations. And then there are these type 2 and type 3, uh, less severe, that correlate with the amount of SMN protein that can be produced from the SMN2 gene. So type 2, which is intermediate severity, you have about 30% of the survival of motor neuron uh, a protein, uh, whereas in type 3, 40% of the survival of motor neuron protein. So humans have this SMN2 gene, this second gene. Why can't this compensate for mutations or deletions in SMN1? This is a key you know, question. There have been some exciting studies since the gene was cloned, and we realized what the differences are between SMN1 and SMN2. One key difference here is that there is a single uh, transition between 
uh, is a C2 at a T, and what that results in is exon skipping. So many of you are familiar with a splicing, which is the process which you start off where a gene is transcribed and you uh, results in a large mRNA molecule, a pre-mRNA, and these introns have to be removed to, uh, to give uh, a functional mRNA molecule that is made up of these different cassettes in purple here. These are the cassettes called exons that are translated into uh, a, a proteins. And these red sequence here, these in introns, are, uh, are removed in the nucleus through the process of RNA processing uh, splicing. This single nucleotide uh, transition here results in exon skipping. So this exon 7 here, which encodes for the end of the protein, the carboxy terminus of a protein, this is not expressed often from the SMN2 gene. Actually, only 10% of the transcripts encoded by SMN2 uh, will be full length, ha having exon 6 through 8. The majority of the transcripts encoded by SMN2 are, are lacking uh, exon uh, 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 seven. This is what the gene looks like, this is what the protein looks like. And this part of the protein that is missing from SMN2, so SMN2 will encode only a very few copies of this full length of, of protein. Researchers have done a lot of experiments to actually show that this is an important part of the protein to promote its stability. So in the case of SMA, where most of the protein is lacking the C terminus, this protein is going to be unstable and degraded, and that's going to result in lower copies of the SMN protein in, 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 in the cell. We, we also have information that's available from other types of patients that, uh, where SMA is not caused by the gene deletions, but instead called, uh, caused by intragenic mutations. These are missense mutations that cluster along hot spots, and, and the geneticists often learn a lot about the function of a protein by doing these cluster maps, and what you see at the C terminus of the protein, this is called the carboxy terminus of the protein, there are a lot of patients that have been identified that have uh, missense mutations uh, in this region of the protein that's involved in dimerization of uh, causing SMN to form these aggregates. This is a particularly important feature of the SMN protein, the ability to talk to other SMN molecules and to form a large macromolecular uh, complex. Another region, important re, uh, function of this region of the protein is the ability to talk to other protein molecules. So SMN is a chaperone in cells and interacts with many different types of protein molecules and helps them do their job. It helps them assemble into large complexes. So this feature of protein-protein interactions is also impaired in patients with SMA because their protein lacks this end of the molecule. Another important part of the molecule is this tutor domain and also involved in protein-protein interactions, the ability of SMN to talk to other proteins and to form large uh, complexes. And you see a number of hot spots here, uh, patients also having that region of the protein affected. So now I'm going to really um, try to address the, 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 uh, the, the question, is why is SMN so important for your motor neurons? This is a motor neuron disease. What is so special about it? I mean, in all cells, there's 30,000 genes. There's, you know, and, and each gene, in code, uh, although all 30,000 genes may not be expressed in any single cell type, you still have many genes that are expressed. Here we have a single gene disorder. What's so special? The loss of a single uh, uh, protein molecule. How, how does this lead to a particular neurodegeneration that we see in spinal muscular uh, atrophy? These are questions that we and other labs have been involved in ever since the disease, the disease gene SMN was cloned and its function uh, had begun to be investigated using biochemical and molecular uh, approaches. 